If you want more joy in your life, if you want more peace in your life, if you want more love in your life, there isn't anything that's going to work better for you than ceasing judgment. So let's examine this thing and pull it apart a little bit. Judgment basically boils down to this. When I say to you, is the rain good or bad, then you're likely to say that if you've got an outdoor wedding planned this afternoon, the rain is bad. But if you live out in the country and you need your tanks filled up, you're going to say the rain is good. So basically that's an opinion and it's dependent on the circumstances around you. But if we say is the rain good or bad, well, the rain is neither. The rain, technically speaking, the rain is just water falling out of the sky. It's a result of condensation, a bunch of other signs scientific stuff I don't know about. But here's the thing. What we do is we form an opinion. We judge the rain good or bad. And as a consequence of that, we then have the emotions relevant to that. So if we've got the outdoor wedding, it's not just that the rain is bad, but now we're going to be miserable because of that. And we're going to talk about what a shame, you know, we couldn't predict the weather. The wedding would have been perfect except for the rain. So it starts to dominate everything around it. When it's the tanks being filled up, we start to go, hey, you know, I'm going to experience lots of joy and happiness. And, you know, maybe you You've seen pictures of three-year-olds dancing in the rain because they're out in the country. It's the first time in their life they've ever seen rain. Once again, what you'll see is an event dominating how we feel. And that's the problem is as soon as we get into judgment, then there's a problem with it. If, you, uh, if you're a fan of the Bible, then you'll know that Adam and Eve lived in paradise until they ate the apple. What most people miss is that the apple came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, the knowledge of good and evil, good and bad, right and wrong, uh, essentially, Adam and Eve lived in paradise because they lived without judgment. They were unable, unable to judge. That probably parallels the development of the prefrontal cortex in which we do all the judgment and the thinking processes. So the problem with judgment is not that you might get it right or get it wrong. The problem with judgment is you've got no idea. You can't tell whether a thing is good or bad today because it's going to take a long time for that to work out how to be good because you know that rain, if it stops just in time for the wedding, well, it wasn't bad after all. And that rain, if it continues and the tanks get filled up and then the place floods, we're going to say that's bad as well. So at the time, we can't tell. I'll give you a classic example from my own personal experience. I said to my father many years ago, you know, how will I know who to marry? He said, you'll just know. And I thought, oh, that's not very helpful. But anyway, um, that actually happened. I just knew. And so I wanted to ask this girl to marry me. And uh, I was afraid that there was going to be um, a possible rejection. And so, you know, there's only two answers, yes or no. And uh, I was pretty, I didn't want to hear the no. So I didn't ask for a long time, probably pushing 18 months or so. And eventually I realized that relationship wasn't going anywhere. And so I said, okay, so how about we get married? And um, she said, no. And I said, how come? And she said, um, because I don't love you enough. She said, I love you like a brother, you know, it's kind of like you're one of the, you know, you're a, fundamentally, you're a good man, but it's, my love for you is not passionate. So I'm, I'm you know, not going to go ahead. And by the way, I'm pregnant to somebody else. Now, this is a woman I'm living with, right? So um, would you say that was a good or a bad day for me? Because, you know, on the day it was bad and uh, it was probably bad for a couple of years. Uh, then a couple of years later, once I'd kind of, you know, moved on or whatever, I hadn't necessarily recovered, uh, but I met my wife, Mary, and we've been married now 45 years and two kids. I can't tell you how much I love those kids. So was that a good day or a bad day when that girl said no? Well, I'm going to suggest you on the day it felt bad, but overall it was good. So how could I tell? I actually needed five to 10 years to be able to figure out whether that was a good thing or a bad thing. I had clients whose house burnt down in the Can Canberra bushfires in 2003. Their business burnt down, then their house burnt down. Bad day? Well, you could say so, yeah. Except the only thing they were left with was a pair of new skis that he had bought her as a birthday present and bought and paid for a holiday in Japan skiing. They said, what do we do? I said, I think, you know, you better go on that holiday and I'll coach you via email. And away they went, this is back in 2003. And, uh, you know, even in 2003, we were coaching via email. But anyway, um, they discovered that they didn't want to continue as restaurateurs, that um, this might have been actually a good break. I said to them, what do you want to do? They wanted to be property developers. They found a block of land in the resort in Japan where they were. They developed that using money from Australia that they were able to kind of beg, borrow and steal. And uh, they become developers and big time property developers now, multi-million dollar personal profits per year. Was their house burning down a good thing or a bad thing? Well, on the day, felt like a bad thing. Long term, good thing. So the real thing about judgment is we can't tell. We're assuming that we're accurate when we have no idea. 
So really what we need to do is understand what judgment does that consumes massive amounts of energy that is wasted. The truth is, we, can, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I referred to that in a previous video. It's really important that we constantly remind ourselves we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Therefore, we can't judge what's going on today because tomorrow's circumstances may very powerfully affect that thing for the good or for the bad. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that suspending judgment is going to bring to you large doses of peace, large doses of compassion and minimal amounts of stress because there's a lot less for you to stress about. If you'd like some more information on that, have a look at the YouTube video. I think it's a TED video done by a lady called Jill Bolte Taylor, who was studying strokes and schizophrenia. And she had a PhD in that. And one day she got in the shower and she had a stroke and uh, she collapsed the bottom of the shower. She'd only turned the hot water on. So she got enormously scalded, but she was overjoyed because she said, hey, guess what? I'm having a stroke. I recognize I'm having a stroke and I can now study strokes from the inside as a person who's experienced it. But as a consequence of that, she lost the ability to speak for something like four, five or six years. She actually lost the ability to use her left brain, which is a thinking, calculating, judging part of our brain. Math, science, English, all of that. She only had the feeling part of her brain left. She had to learn to talk again. When she describes what it's like not being able to think and therefore not being able to judge, she uses one letter, one word, a five letter word, bliss. She talks about suspending judgment as being a place of bliss. You could promise yourself that, you could deliver yourself that. In everything that you do, do everything possible to suspend judgment. Just say, I don't know, I can't judge, I'm not qualified to judge, there's no way that I could judge, I'm just gonna let it be as it is, and you'll be experiencing the bliss that Jill talks about.